Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on projectile motion. In this video, we're going to look at the question I left you guys with in the previous video. So if you haven't, you can look at it, I'll leave it a link in the description below. Now, what is the question saying? So here we say we have a coin that is projected at an angle 53 degrees above the horizontal from a point 50 meters above the ground level. And then this coin reaches the ground, reaches the ground at a horizontal distance of 40 meters from the launch point. They calculate in the first part the time it was in air, and in the second part the velocity with which the coin was projected. So the initial velocity. Now, if you have watched the, the first video, which I do recommend that you watch, um, you should understand, you should of course notice that this question is exactly almost the same as the last question we worked out in that video. Now, in this case, we're going to assume that you've already watched the first video, so you know how to handle project of question. But now we just want to look at or focus on how you approach a question like this one, where the object is launched from um, an elevated point, and more importantly, you are not given the initial velocity. Now, how does it work? Well, the first thing we have to do is to create a picture of our question. So let's look at the solution. So what the saying is, we have an, 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 a launch point which is elevated or at some height. So this point is 15 meters from the ground. So this is a point 15 meters from the ground. So why is our ground? Our ground is way down here. Okay. Now what is happening here? So we are being told that this projectile is launched. We're not being told that, uh, what the velocity is. It's what we want to find in the second part. But we are told that it, this, this, this projectile is launched at an angle 53 degrees above the horizontal. That's there, up there. 15 um, degrees above the horizontal. So when you look at a velocity of that nature, it means that the horizontal is this one. I'm drawing at this point because that's the launch point, 15 meters from the from the ground. So when I measure 53 degrees, I see that I'm going somewhere up there. So let's say that is our velocity. So this velocity, let's level it V0, the initial velocity or the launch velocity. Now, what is happening here? So what you should see is that this projectile is going to move in a certain way. So of course, we know to say the projectile is going to take a path like that. So that will be the trajectory of the projectile. And then until it lands on the ground. Okay, so with that, now we have a clear picture of what is happening. Now we can see how we can use our methods to work out this particular question. So again, I'm assuming that you have watched the first video so you know how to handle projectiles. The first thing that you always do, you never, head into a projectile question and then using that initial velocity the way it is, you always break down that velocity into its two components. So the two components, of course, again, um, I hope you have seen the, the Victor's uh, video on how to resolve with the components. So very quickly, if this is the vector, and then the velocity is V, that's the value of the vector, and then this is your angle, the x component will be the horizontal component, the y component will be the vertical component. In this case, notice that the x component, this is 53 degrees. The x component is adjacent to the angle, so it is related by cos. So it is basically just cos that angle and then multiplying the vector itself. That will give us the x component. The y component, they're related by sine because they're opposite to each other, so it is the vector itself sine 50 degree. And then again, notice that this vector is pointing up, so it will be positive. This vector is pointing to the right. It will be positive as well. Okay, that was just a quick description of how you get these components. So of course, you can see the video on that. So the velocity, the initial velocity in Y, we've seen that this is going to be V0, sine 53. And the initial velocity in X is going to be V0, cos 53. Okay, so of course those are angles of 53 degrees. Okay, now 
to work out a project or question, you always look at it in terms of using the, the components. Look at what is happening in the x axis, look at what is happening in the, in the y axis. In the previous video, when we had a question like this one, we were given the velocity and then we we're trying to find the time it was in the air and also the horizontal range. But in this question, on the other hand, notice that the question gives us what the range is, saying that the horizontal range from the launch point, not just the horizontal, I mean, that horizontal distance. So the horizontal distance from the launch point to where it lands is 40 meters. So we're given the range, and then I want to find the time it was in air and the velocity it was not with. So it is similar to the question we worked out earlier on, but in this case, we're not given the velocity. The method we used in the previous question might not be sufficient to work out this question. If you tried it, you will notice that it will take, it will be very, very long. So to work out this one, we're going to show you another method that you can use to work out a project or question of this nature. The same method should be able to work when you use it on the previous question as well. I ask you guys to try it. Let's see if you'll be able to put it on. Okay, now let's see this method that I want you guys to, to use here. So of course, you'll start with the components. Let's say in the x-axis. In the previous question, we started with the y-axis. Here we're going to start with the x-axis. Our approach to the x-axis will be the same because even here in the x-axis there is no acceleration. Because of that, we're going to use speed is equal to distance over time. So when you look at this, the speed in the x-axis it's constant throughout. That's value one chain. You don't have the values; it's an expression, but it's going to be v zero. Cos 53, that will be the velocity in the, in the x axis. The distance is given, that's the range that is given as 40 meters. The time, we don't know what the time is, we want to find it. So here, I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. And then now I'm going to have V0 multiplying T is equal to 40 divided by cos 53. Okay, so if you simplify this, you should see that it is going to give you. 66.5. Yeah, it's going to give you 56.5 uh, 66.5. So I can then write V0 multiplying T is going to give us 66.5. Okay, so I'm going to hold on to this as my equation one because I can't work out this any further because I don't know what the V0 is. And I also don't know what the T is. Now the rule is if you have an equation with two things that you don't know. To work it out, you need a second equation with the same two things. Now, where do we get the second equation? This is where we go to the other axis. This was in the horizontal axis. Now let's look at what is happening in the y axis. Okay, so let's just add one more page here. We can use the figure one. Okay, so in the y axis, what is happening there? So in the y-axis, we're seeing one thing, the launch velocity, which is the initial velocity in the y-axis. We saw that, we already got it earlier on, that was V0. Then this was sine 53. Now, apart from this, what else is happening there? So we have acceleration. In the y-axis, there's acceleration. And this acceleration is downwards, negative 9.8. And this is in meters per second squared. Then, apart from this, what you guys should understand is that just from the y-axis point of view, this object changes from point A, it goes up, and then it comes down and lands 15 meters below point, point A. Now, what we're going to have here is not distance. What I want you to get is going to be displacement. This is the difference in the approach I'm going to take for this question to the one I took in the first one. But this same approach should be able to work even with the next question that we did. The question, of course, the one we did in the, in the previous video. Okay, now if it was the distance, if I was using S to give me the distance here, it would have been the distance for going up and coming down, which is a little bit longer. But with this method, since I'm taking S to give me my displacement, displacement doesn't care about the route I'm taking. It's only saying I started from this level in the y axis and I end up where? I end up here. So this is where I end up. So the displacement is just going to be the difference in those um, between those two levels. 
and notice that this difference is 15. But because I'm going down, this displacement is going down. Displacement is a vector. So I have to respect the direction of going. So since I'm moving from A to point B, which is in the down direction or in the negative direction, I'm going to introduce the negative. Notice that gravity is also going down. So it only makes sense that the two will have a similar sign. So I have negative 15 for the downward displacement, a negative 9.8 for the downward acceleration. And the launch velocity was upwards. So what I have here is a positive V0 sine 53. So in other words, my displacement of the object in the y-axis is negative 15 meters. OK, with this in mind, what I want to find is uh, t. I want to get what t is. So I'm kind of interested in this value t or what, the value, what t will have. So in this case, since this is what I have, I now have to find an equation that relates this, these quantities. And notice that when you try the three equations that you have, you are not interested in the final velocity. All you want to work with is an initial velocity, an acceleration and displacement and time. So we're not interested in the final velocity. And notice that the equation that we work for that is the second equation plus half at squared. So this is the equation that is going to work here. But the displacement becomes negative 15. The initial velocity is the launch velocity. We are in the y-axis, the launch velocity in the y-axis. That's V0 sine 53. So all this is just our initial velocity in the y-axis. But this is multiplying our time. So even if we're in the y-axis, this time is still the same for going up and coming down. But because it's just displacement, it works just fine still. So this is plus, wait, it's plus, I wrote minus 10, sorry. OK, so this is plus 1 over 2. And then the acceleration, negative 9.8. And then the time, again, the time t there. So now it's just simplification. So if I simplify this a little bit, what I get is going to be V0 multiplying t. Then I have sine 53. Then this is, so let's multiply the t with the V0 so that the t has moved here. So if I simplify this, that's on the negative sign, that's a minus. The minus and the positive will be negative here. This is going to be 4.9 t squared. Okay, so I can even hold on to this one as my equation two. Now, notice what we had for equation one. Equation one was v0 t equal to 66.5. This was our equation one. Uh, this, we got this from the x-axis. In the equation two, we got this. We just will get this from the y-axis. So once we've obtained it for the two equations, notice that they only have to send two things that we don't know. So you can use any of the preferred methods of solving simultaneous equation. They should come out just fine. But here I'll just notice that V0 multiplying T gives me 66.3.5, meaning that where I have V0 multiplied T here, I'm going to put this value. And how will this simplify? We have minus 15. 66.5, where that was V0 multiplying T, then this now is multiplying sine 53 minus 4.9 T squared. Okay, so here now, how do I proceed? Of course, that is a simplification to get the value of T. To get the value of T, I can group, move the 4.9 T squared to the left hand side. What I'm going to have is positive 4.9 T squared equal to 66. 0.5 sine 53, then move the 15, this negative 15 to become positive. So I'm going to have positive 15. And then simplify this further. So now I have t squared is equal to 66.5 sine 53 plus 15. Then this is over 0.9. And here we can square root. So that now our value of t will be equal to the square root of 6, 6.5, sine 53 plus 15 over 4.9. Okay, everything is under the square root. Just want to be very careful here. You want to calculate the first operators before adding to the 5. 
don't make a mistake of adding of just typing it. Sometimes the calculator you are using might end up adding the 15 to the, the 53 before ever getting inside. So just to be careful, I always like to put the, uh, the brackets there whenever you need to calculate with, with the trig ratios. So if you work out this, you should get the value of time as 3.728 seconds. Okay, so we found the value of time. Next, we need to find the initial velocity. So if you look at equation one, you can use another three equations, then you should be able to get the answer. But when you look at equation one, equation one was V0 multiplying T equals to 66.5. And then here we want to find the velocity now V0. This is now equal to 66.5 divided by T. But we're just from seeing what T is. So now I can put 66.5 divided by that value of t we're just been getting, that's 3.728. And if we evaluate this, we get 17.8 meters per second. So this becomes the velocity with which this coin was launched. Okay, so I hope you guys were able to get how this question works. Notice that all we had to do was use the displacement and the displacement doesn't care about where the object, the route the object is taking. It only looks at where the object started from and where the object ended up. And since this is in the y-axis, the object just moved 15 meters downwards. So the displacement became negative 15. Then everything else, the initial velocity in the x-axis, in the y-axis, I mean, we got this as this was the launch velocity, sign 53. The initial velocity was going upwards, but don't let that confuse you. The acceleration is negative, so it will reduce that Q0 and then start bringing it down until when it is going to be. So trust the physics here to work in your favor to give you the answer. Okay, so I hope you guys have understood how this method works. Try it out with the previous question that we did and see if you get the same answer we got. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, see you guys in the next tutorial. All the best.